particular circuit diagram for, from Genong will be sort of a roadmap in, in today's lecture. The, this bit here, this bit here, cerebral cortex, okay? These lines, this dotted line is the cerebral cortex. Do, forget about the D and the A, just look at the dotted line, okay? This is represented, this is representing the cerebral cortex and the cells of the cerebral cortex, TK. Then you have another dotted line here. Then you have the brain stem, the brain stem here. You have the cerebellum on the side. As you go along further down, here you have the muscles, the recipient of the whole program. Do you see the orientation now? Cerebral cortex, a level below cerebral cortex, brain stem, cerebellum, muscles. So, bitter spinal cord is represented by these fibers. And if you can see that these are the motor neurons, okay, I'll, I'll go in detail, but these are the different type of motor neurons, they reside in the spinal cord. This is, since this is a schematic diagram, and if you look closer, this is, this is, a, he, he has shown one type of extensor muscle and one type of flexor muscle. Okay, this is a flexor muscle at the way the fibers have been made. Okay, so there are there are these two fibers, symbolic fibers, which start from the cerebral cortex and end in the uh, on top of the tracts that we read yesterday. Which were those tracts? The tracts were reticulospinal, okay, fibers, uh, pons reticulospinal fibers, uh, medulla, we had corticospinal fibers, then we had rubrospinal fibers, vestibulospinal fibers. Now you see the, you can also, this is a good diagram because you also see the anatomical uh, connections without the jargon of anatomy. So there are short fibers, these two, this is cerebral cortex com communicating with the Reticul uh, reticulospinal fibers okay so they, it is stimulating the plus sign is stimulating then you see that you have the cerebral cortex sending its longest fiber the corticospinal tract right down to the level of the spinal cord ventral horn motor neuron this ne uh, neuron i can tell you from here you can't see it but it's a flexor alpha motor neuron so it the corticospinal tracts go directly or on either the interneurons of the spinal cord or directly on the uh, alpha motor neuron of the ventral horn which are innervating skeletal muscles directly. What is this? This is the red nucleus and the cerebral cortex fiber communicates with the red nucleus through short fibers, a cortex called the corticorubral fibers which end up directly on the red nucleus, it, they stimulate it okay and from this nucleus you have the rubrospinal tract going down and again to the flexor alpha motor there's there's a cerebro rubral fiber here as well uh, which is uh, cerebello rather uh, which is coming from the cerebellum and stimulating it as well now i'll focus here on this bit here this bit here okay as you can see that Corticoreticular fibers are these are corticoreticular fibers, these two that he has depicted. Remember, this is a schematic diagram, guys. This is not just two fibers, there are thousands and thousands of fibers like this coming down. And this, these are not just one nuclei, they have many nuclei. Okay, so you anatomy will be grinding you on these details very soon, hopefully. So, these corticoreticular fibers <clears throat> they come down on top of these reticular nuclei. One is uh, this is now additional information. So you have the excitatory reticular formation and the inhibitory reticular formation. The cortex stimulates the excitatory fiber, which is excitatory to the extensor gamma motor neuron. This was the flexor, gamma, uh, flexor alpha motor neuron. Now we, the green thing is the extensor gamma motor neuron. When, when the cortex stimulates the pons reticular, uh, ret reticular formation uh, centers, they are basically excitatory in nature because they excite the extensor neurons. 
So this stimulation leads to excitation of the extensor neuron. This here is inhibitory. These are inhibitory neurons by their nature, as you can see right here. They are inhibiting the same control, uh, extensor neurons, gamma efferent neurons, okay, to, to keep a check and balance on the stimulation. You will see a lot of this in CNS. Something is being stimulated at the same time, it's, it's also being inhibited. This is, these local circuits are there to keep a balance so that whatever the target neuron is, it doesn't go beyond its scope. Now, so cerebral cortex stimulate by stimulating an inhibitory nucleus an inhibitory fiber in actually increases inhibition so although this is a plus but eventually this plus will stimulate a inhibitory fiber enhancing this minus do you understand this will help you understand cerebellum one day as well very important point is this guy here Please make a note of this straight away. What is this? Ascending sensory fibers via ALS. So anterolateral means it is placed anterolaterally in the spinal cord. So this ascending fiber, while it was minding its own business going through the brain stem to the upper areas and eventually uh, telling the cortex of the wonderful experiences that the muscle is having. Okay and the surrounding fascia. It gave an excitatory branch here. This excitatory fiber is given to the excitatory pons center of the reticular formation. Sort of gives it a wake up call. Here. This is a sensory information stimulating descending motor. I'll just walk, welcome back. I'll just walk you through these, these, these points. This he has shown, as I mentioned, a gamma motor neuron okay the gamma motor neuron comes here and goes into your extensor muscle and innervates the tapering end of the muscle spindle the gamma efferent coming here going into the muscle minding its business right uh, going to the muscle spindle tapering end and that's that and you know what gamma efferents do okay there you see the red stuff this is the sensory fiber emanating from the muscle spindle going to the dorsal horn uh, synapsing with the alpha motor neuron mind you i am now moving my my cursor in a circular fashion this bache is the reflex arc of the stretch reflex what is left is mr lonely flexor alpha motor neuron it's right here is going to the lonely flexor muscle on the side another very interesting thing that you immediately should learn is this information check this out what do you see in this red box see that the gammas the gamma family is under the reticular reticulospinal tract influence see the flexors the flexor alpha is under the influence of the corticospinal and the rubrospinal. Finally, extensor alpha again is an, the, under the influence of vestibular spinal, which is a brainstem a level of descending tract. Move to the final point. We'll look at the cerebellum now. This is the cerebellum. Oh, by the way, I missed out the vestibular nuclei. It's, it's part of this, not anatomically, but physiologically speaking, it's part of the cerebellum. I want you to focus on the vestibular nucleus. We had the vestibulospinal fibers coming from the vestibular nucleus, nuclei and terminating on the extensor alpha motor neuron. The cerebellum is inhibiting the vestibular nucleus. Okay, And there's a, there are all sorts of negatives here. Suffice to say at, at this point where we have not formally read the cerebellum, that cerebellum basically inhibits the daylights out of vestibular nuclei. Okay, if vestibular, vest vestibular spinal fiber is to stimulate this, this extensor flexor, which it does, cerebellum won't have it. Cerebellum is, is continuously inhibiting this neuron. It is being kept in check by the cerebellum. Say it in one other way, shall I? 
if I were to cut the cerebellar influence, inhibitory influence, if I were to get rid of this, this cerebellum here, what do you think will happen at this point? The extensor alpha. Yes, intense firing. Because it's now, it's free from the inhibitions of the cerebellum. It's going into the, it's basically supplying the extrafusal fibers of the extensor muscle. It will become overexcited, extended, tense, can we say spastic, spasm, spasticity ensues. Spasticity is when you overstimulate a muscle and this overstimulation causes a functional disability of the muscle such that it cannot do its job. We call it spastic paralysis. Flaccid is when you cut the nerve. So all of this is upper motor neuron lesions. When you do a lower motor neuron lesion, you cut the nerve, you cut the, you cut this nerve here, you cut it. When you cut this nerve, this muscle will again go into paralysis. But what kind of paralysis? The, the overexcitory type, you have all, you've denervated it. It will go into flaccidity. It's a trick. So stay with me. Focus on this. Focus here. This is the gamma efferent neuron. Let me say if I were to overstimulate it. This here. Forget about the inhibitory arm. I have just knocked it out. I have, I am overstimulating it somehow from this circuit. And this really has become very angry. What will happen to the muscle because of this harkat and why the muscle will go into spastic paralysis by the exaggerated stretch reflex that this ex that this overdriven gamma efferent will, will it will keep stretching the spinal uh, uh, spindle the sensory fibers will keep sending stretched uh, stretch valleys uh, input into the spinal cord and the <clears throat> motor neuron will keep contracting the extrafusal fiber it's like it's like a perpetual positive feedback loop here which will keep on over exciting the extensor muscle and it will go into spastic paralysis also call it call it the gamma loop the question i'm leaving you with we have just established that disturbing the vestibulospinal fibers by removing the cere cerebellum will cause spasticity in the muscle also if you do the gamma loop through hyper ex, uh, exciting the gamma efferents again the muscle will go into spastic paralysis if i were to set spinal cord cutting it dorsal horn which spasticity will be relieved this one or this one